Jairadha Madhava Kunja Vihari I know you're all on mute, but I hope you're singing very loudly. For those of you who are shy singing, this is a good opportunity because no one can hear you. You're on mute. You can sing as loudly as you like. Jaya Gopi Janavalabha Girivaradhari Gopi Janavallabha Girivaradhari Jashoda Nandana Raja Janalam Jashoda Nandana Raja Jana Dandana Jamuna Tira Jamuna Tira Manachari Jayadha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jayadha Madhava Gopi Janna Valla Bhagiri Shodanandana Braja Janarandana Jashodanandana Braja Janarandana Jamunati Ravanachari Jamunati Ravanachari Jayaradhamadhava Oh, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shri Nishingha, Jai Nishingha, Jai O Jai Nishingha Shri Nishingha, Jai Nishingha, Jai O Jai Nishingha Praladesha, Jaya Palma, Mukha Palma Bringa Praladesha, Jaya Palma, Mukha Palma Bringa Jaina Singha, Jaina Singha, Jaya Jaina Singha Dev Jaina Singha, Jaina Singha, Jaya Jaina Singha Dev Praladesha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Vrinda Jayam Singha Dev, Jayam Singha Dev, Jayam Singha Dev, Jayam Singha Dev. Jayana Singha Dev, Singha Dev, Singha Dev, Jayana Singha Dev. Jayana Singha, Jayana Singha, Jayo Jayana Singha Dev. Shri Nur 
Singha Jainer, Singha Jaya Jainer, Singha Jainer Singha, Jainer Singha De, Jainer Singha De, Jaya Jainer Singha De. Jaya Lakshmi Nara Singha, Jaya Lakshmi Nara Singha, Jaya Lakshmi Nara Singha, Jaya Lakshmi Nara Singha. Jaya Pralad Nrsingha 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 Jaya Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada, Jaya Srila Now we exclaim our joy and our appreciation for all of these spiritual personalities, our spiritual predecessors. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Pari Raja Kacharya Stotara Sapa Shri Srimad His Divine Grace AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sakaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adhita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhana Ki Vrindavan Dham Ki Maya Purnavadu Dham Ki, Ganga Mai Ki, Jalmana Mai Ki, Tulsi Devi Ki, Bhakti Devi Ki, Sama Veda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Thai Gaur Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo Bo. Om Vishnu Badaya, Krishna Vrstaya Bhutale Srimadhe Radha Nata Swami Nityanamane. Om Vishnu Badaya, Krishna Vrstaya Bhutale Srimadhe Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamane. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharne Nirvishesha Srimadhi Paschati Deshatari. So, so, so much to say, so much to say. Uh, the, the stories of Lord Narasimhadev and the glories of Lord Narasimhadev are basically limitless because the Lord's glories are ever increasing. Uh, in this material world where everything is governed by death, in the spiritual world, everything is governed by life and consciousness. And so it just expands and expands and expands. Uh, I was discussing with my father-in-law this morning. He likes to share nectar, Anuttama Prabhu, my wife's father, Anuttama Prabhu, not my father, Anuttama Prabhu. And uh, he said that once devotees asked Srila Prabhupada about Ahovalam, and there's some controversy regarding the Leelas in Ahovalam, because if it was on planet Earth in South India, how is it in the heavenly planets that these Leelas took place? And Srila Prabhupada said, basically, we like to avoid controversy. Devotees are not interested in controversy. So we understand that Lord Nishinga Dev is everywhere. Yato, yato, yami, tato, nursingha, bahir nursingho, hridaye nursingho. He's everywhere. He's outside and he's also inside our hearts. Lord Nishinga Dev is everywhere. And the glories of Lord Nishinga Dev, the glories of Lord Krishna are limitless. Um, so, uh, yeah, please go ahead and meet yourselves as you come in. Um, so where to start? Let us start 
the, with the, the story. Most of you know the story of Lord Narasimha and Prahlad Maharaj and Harini Kashipu and all these characters and personalities. Um, but let's tell it the way Hollywood would tell the story. <laughs> so you have these two brothers. They're fantastic. They're talented. They're intelligent. And they're born with natural abilities. And what do they do? They want to go out into the world. They have incredible parents. Um, Kashyapa Muni and Diti. And uh, they want to go out into the world and use the skills and the talents that they were born with to make something of themselves. What a wonderful beginning, an exciting beginning for the story. These, 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 these brothers were born with mystical abilities and they want to go out and share their prowess with the world, become famous, become wealthy, become successful. Who doesn't want that in life? Uh, in fact, that's what we glorify. What could be wrong with that? Going out, if you're better than your fellow man, go out and show yourself, show that you're better. And what will happen? People will bow to you. People will worship you. People will appreciate you. You will become a hero. So these two brothers, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, they began to do that. They went out and they showed the world how powerful they were. And little by little, the whole universe began to accept them as the kings. And uh, Hiranyaksha, he was uh, especially, uh, uh, he enjoyed uh, finding great resources of gold. Now today, when someone finds uh, gold uh, in, in extreme quantities, we, uh, we appreciate him. He's a... Uh, He's a prospector. He's, a, he's an industrialist. He is uh, 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 doing hard work and getting great results. So we have this brother out there prospecting the universe for great quantities of gold and gathering it together, becoming in incredibly wealthy. Uh, and um, suddenly, Hiranyakashipu hears that his brother, Hiranyaksha, in the midst of his work, his good work for the world, doing what he knows to do, doing what he can in the best way possible, becoming famous and successful and wealthy, he, uh, he suddenly dies in a tragic uh, uh, fight with a very mysterious personality who they call Vishnu. Who is this Vishnu? Uh, they say that some, only some can even see him. Who is this Vishnu? He comes and he goes at his own uh, uh, desire, and uh, he's not perceivable by everyone, but he's <clears throat> very powerful. He has a group of people that he cares for, uh, uh, Brahmanas, uh, Vaishnavas. Why, what right did he have to kill Hiranyaksha, who was just you know, uh, going about his life and trying to become a successful and happy person. What? How dare Vishnu do this? Who is this Vishnu that he thinks he can do this? So Hiranyakashipu at this point, he has a, he, he has the hero of our the beginning of this story, the hero of our story, Hiranyakashipu. He has a, a great crossroads, a great, a great setback. What is he to do? His brother, who he loved, who he was, they were so intimately connected in their work for the world. His brother suddenly dies. Mysterious circumstances. They say that this Vishnu can take any form. And they say that he took the form of a boar and attacked his brother. Hiranyakashipu was so angry, so frustrated. Uh, how can this be the way that the, the universe is meant to be? This is unfair. This is not right. And he decides that it's his place to set things right. And he goes and he begins to do great yogic penance, austerity, uh, put himself in what they call tapasya, put himself in difficulty to get a better result. He controls his breathing, he controls his eating, and he stands on the tips of his toes for such a long time. And what is the intention that he has? So some people, they go to yoga 
at the local uh, uh, Bhakti Yoga DC run by our friend Gopi. And uh, they go to yoga there and they think, I'm going to go to yoga to get a healthy body and a healthy mind. And after some time, they begin to see results. Yoga is very powerful. It's very powerful in this material world. We know there's so many stories like Dhruva, who by doing pranayam, controlling the breath, and ashtanga yoga, he was able to see the Lord himself. So Hiranyakashipu, what is his desire? He wants to change the universal order of things. He is going to get so much shakti, so much power in his body from his yogic practice that he will uh, become immortal. Now, this may seem uh, uh, far-fetched, but you see, what is it? Hiranyakashipu, he's a very smart person, and he recognizes it. What is it that everyone is afraid of? Uh, when we're afraid of, of uh, losing some money or losing uh, 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 some position, ultimately that fear is really just a fear of death reflected in the temporary nature of our lives. So in his great intelligence, Hiranyakashipu thinks, what better way to fight fear than to conquer all fear? I will conquer death itself. And then all fear is gone. Uh, what, what after that, what comes next? If I can just use my fortitude and my intelligence and my stick to itness and my hard work to ultimately frustrate death itself, then I can create the perfect world, the world where I'm at the center of all things as the, as the, as the leader and the ruler. And I will bring those who worship me and love me and care for me. I will bring them close and I will protect them. And those who are against me and inimical to me because of their fault, and their folly, I will punish them. And I will bring order, and I will bring peace, and I will bring joy to this world. This is Hiranyakashipu's plan. So he, uh, he begins to do these penances, standing on the tips of his toes for so long that an anthill grows over his body. Now, imagine how much fortitude it takes that when our fingers are hurt, it's like a, a thorn comes into our finger. We can't think straight. There's some difficulty. Just like the other day, I had a hard drive crash. <laughs> One of my hard drives crashed in the middle of trying to back up my computer. I couldn't think of anything else. I was in so much distress. My data is being lost. What will happen to me if my data is lost? I, will, I have no identity without my data. So, here in the Kashibu, he didn't have that problem. He was so focused and powerful that ants began to eat the flesh from his body, but he didn't lose his focus. He knew what he was there for. He remembered his brother who had been killed untimely by this mysterious arrogant Vishnu. He was going to gain immortality and then he was going to find this Vishnu who had done this wrong to him and his family and he would kill him and then he would set the universe right. The ants began to eat his whole body until there was nothing left but bones. And eventually the prana the air and the intention of Hiranyakashipu's uh, uh, focus was just circulating in his body and his soul stayed trapped within the bones and inside the anthill. Finally, so much shakti, power, energy was coming from this anthill that it started to burn the universe. It's described like a celestial fire was coming from this. Now, uh, uh, this is an important lesson for all of us. If we want to achieve something in life, Tapasya is required. And if we use our intelligence and tapasya for the right thing, we can achieve, achieve incredible results, as shown by Hiranyakashipu. Finally, the archangel of creation, Brahma, the highest being in the universe, deputized to create this material universe with four heads riding on a celestial swan. Brahma descended and he decided he had to put a stop to this penance 
because it was becoming disturbing to everyone. So he poured from his water pot. He poured um, celestial water on this anthill and invited Hiranyakashipu back into his body in a fully uh, surcharged material form. His body was more beautiful and celestial and glowing than it had ever been, more powerful than it had ever been. And he said to Hiranyakashipu, our hero, our hero, Hiranyakashipu, he said to him, oh, great yogi, uh, someone is saying that it's hard to hear me. You're having some difficulty hearing me. Is that correct? Too quiet. Is that true? Um, well, I hope that you're, you're uh, able to hear me because I'm doing my very best, my level best. I uh, moved the mic a little closer. Maybe this helps. So maybe I need to do some tapasya so that I get a stronger voice. So Brahma said, oh, hero, Hiranyakashipu, what is it that you want? You have done so much tapasya. Tell me, what can I do to appease you and stop you from burning the universe with your tapasya? Now, Hiranyakashipu had had a long time to think about this. And he said, oh, Brahma, Oh, creator of the material world, I want immortality. And Brahma said, I have very bad news for you. I cannot give you immortality. Even I don't have immortality. Anyone within the material universe at some point will die, even myself. And Hiranyakashipu said, well, I thought that you might say that and I plan to change these things when I'm in charge. But for now, grant me this wish. I don't want to die in the day or in the night. Can you do that, O Brahma? Yes, I can grant you that. Technically, I can do that. Not in the day and not in the night. Granted. O Brahma, then, if you can grant me that, then can you and your power grant me that I will not be killed on the inside or on the outside of any building. Yes, I can do that. How about not on the land, not in the sea, and not in the air? Not by any, any man or beast, not by uh, uh, anything living or dead. Brahma granted him all these boons. He uh, felt, after his careful consideration, Hiranyakashipu felt, that he had found a loophole. Now this is how the world works. There are rules, and then there are those who rise above the rules. And those who can rise above the rules achieve great things. We know this, this is Hollywood, the story of Hollywood. He found a way to break through. He came from difficult circumstances, but he rose above those circumstances to achieve great things. Now Hiranyakashipu, was truly unstoppable. And he would right the wrongs. And he began traveling and conquering everyone. Now, during this time, unbeknownst to him, he had, uh, at one point early in his tapasya, he had gone and uh, he had gone home uh, at one point and his wife had become pregnant. And while he was doing, going back and doing his tapasya during that great last push of tapasya where his body had been subsumed by an anthill, his wife had given birth to a child. And this child's name was Prahlad. And uh, Prahlad had been born in a very strange circumstance, the son of this great king. Uh, and he didn't understand this. He didn't know this at the time. His son had been born in an ashram of a great sage, a muni, a rishi, uh, named Narada. How did this come to pass? Why wasn't he born in the palace uh, of Hiranyakashipu? Well, what had happened was during the time of his great uh, tapasya, all of the demigods who were very afraid of him getting so much power, they had gone and, and, and I should mention, these demigods, they happen to always be the worshipers of this mysterious, uh, not, fair, not fairly playing Vishnu who had killed his brother, 
appearing and disappearing at will, uh, 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 giving out punishment as he desires. Hiranyakashipu uh, was a great enemy of this Vishnu. And these, these demigods, these devatas, headed by Indra, they worshiped Vishnu. They went to him for protection. And they decided that if Hiranyakashipu's wife, Kayada, was pregnant, then they had to perform an abortion. This was their, this was their idea. The first abortion recorded in Vedic history. They were going to perform an abortion on Kayada. They came to the palace when Hiranyakashipu was away and they grabbed Kayadu and they were um, very intent on causing her and her, her unborn child harm. The, uh, at that moment, this great sage, Narada. Narada is famous for being a singer of kirtan, always singing. Radhika Raman Jai Radhika Raman. Radhika Raman Jai Radhika Raman. He's clairvoyant by his power of his tapasya of chanting, always chanting. He is traveling throughout the universe. And he is friend to everyone. And he came to that place and he said, my dear Indra, Oh, great demigod, what are you doing? How, do you, how can you say that the child of this uh, uh, powerful yogic king will be like him? You don't know what he will be, and you have no right to kill the child. You don't know what the child's actions will be. You cannot determine a child's future by his father's activities. Let me take him. Let me take Kayadu and her unborn child to my ashram. I'll care for them. And when the time comes, then we can all decide what to do but it's uh, unjust and, un and, and uh, a foul action to kill this child uh, based on the idea that he will uh, be evil or that he will not uh, 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 do good in the world. You have no right. So he took this child and what did he do? He would sing every day and he would care for Kayadu in his ashram. He had a beautiful ashram and Narada's ashram was populated by all kinds of sweet souls and they were all lovingly uh, serving together kindly, uh, 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 selflessly. And Kayadu was so touched. And she began listening every day to the teachings of Narada. And so uh, at some point she gave birth there in that ashram to her child. And when Hiranyakashipu came back from his penance, Narada delivered this child to the father and said, this is your child. You didn't know. His name is Prahlad. Uh, Hiranyakashipu's eyes filled with tears. Can you imagine the reunion of his wife and, and, uh, and his baby that he didn't know he had? He was so happy and Bhagavatam describes that he would smell, his favorite activity was to smell the head of his son Prahlad. They would rub sweet oil into the hair of Prahlad and after giving him a, a nice massage, he would hold him on his lap and he would kiss him and he would smell his head lovingly. So Hiranyakashipu began to travel the universe and make everyone uh, his subject, which is what powerful people do. What is different between this story and the story today? Uh, just see, uh, uh, someone becomes good at business and then after some time they become president of a nation and people uh, offer them respect from their ability to uh, uh, Defeat others in business, defeat others in, in, uh, in their profession, uh, to be more famous, more powerful, more wealthy than others. So such was the case of Hiranyakashipu. And uh, soon the whole universe was bowing to him and he brought peace. He brought peace. Anyone who would do what he said would be very peaceful. It's described that so many beautiful ladies would wander through the palaces of Hiranyakashipu, totally fearless. But those who were inimical to him, if he even raised one eyebrow, they would shake in great fear. So powerful. He took Prahlad on his lap and he said, Prahlad, I want to give you what I have. I want you to become a great king. I want you to learn what I've learned and to uh, 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 accept from me all of the knowledge and the power that I have. So the first step is I want you to go to my Gurukula that I've set up with the famous sons of Shukracharya, Chandanamarka, and they will teach you all the ways of politics, and diplomacy, and uh, uh, governance, and uh, 
uh, uh, financial management and war and peace and all these things. So you go on my order and you learn and make me proud of my son. Now, Prahlad was incredibly sweet and soft. Um, and maybe from the perspective of some of Hiranyakashipu's war generals and others, maybe the boy was a little too soft. He was soft-spoken. He was sweet. And he was kind. Uh, maybe a little too kind for a young prince. I mean, after all, Kshatriyas, kings, princes, leaders, it's their business to punish accordingly. But Hiranyakashipu wasn't worried about that. He knew that if he went to school and associated with the other strong, powerful boys of his uh, uh, family, that he would become strong and become a king. And he would be proud of him. Uh, what Hiranyakashipu didn't know was that while he was in the womb, Uh, Prahlad had been imbibing the teachings of Narada, and Narada was much to the horror of Hiranyakashipu. He didn't know this, but much to his horror when he later found out. Narada, who had protected his unborn child, Narada was a devotee of Vishnu, his sworn enemy. So now the plot thickens, as they say. Now, unbeknownst to Hiranyakashipu, our hero, his son has been poisoned from the inside out by the teachings of the servants of Vishnu. What are these teachings? Uh, unlike what he's learning in school, Prahlad has been taught by Narada that there is no friend and there is no enemy that everyone is a child of Vishnu. Everyone is a child of God. He is taught that the highest goal of life is not to conquer and rule and subjugate and gather riches and wealth, but in fact, to be humble, the opposite, to be the servant of everyone, to see Vishnu in everyone, that within their heart rests two souls, the eternal spark of of, of God, Paramatma, Vishnu himself, residing in the heart of everyone. And next to that soul, the, 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 the super soul that is Vishnu, next to that soul, the individual soul, uh, you, me, uh, in any living creature, uh, there is a spark of consciousness that comes from the divine fire that is uh, Vishnu. And that spark of fire is riding along with Vishnu in the body, and, and Vishnu is animating that body according to the desires of the soul. And that actually, if you see with clear vision, there is nothing but brothers and sisters, friends, and everywhere. Prahlad begins um, failing out of school, we can say. Uh, he can't seem to grasp the lessons of his teachers. They bring him to his father, very frustrated. He doesn't seem to get it, oh great king. We are trying our best. He, he, he insists that how can anyone be friend and how can anyone be enemy? I love everyone. But how can this be possible for someone who's a king? His responsibility is to uh, divide and conquer. Hiranyakashipu sits his son down. He says, my boy, I love you. But this is very important. I need you to go back and I need you to get your act together. Focus and learn these things. Make me proud. Make me happy. Prahlad, going back to school, he remembers his favorite activity that Narada used to engage in is the chanting of the names of Vishnu. Infectious. It makes Prahlad feel transcendent. Uh, uh, he forgets uh, uh, any connection to the material world and just completely connected to the spiritual world. So Prahlad decides that once during recess that he should share this with his friends. And... Uh, he says to them, oh, friends, I want you to try something, taste something, this thing called kirtan. And he says, repeat after me, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, 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 Ram
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And they're grabbing whatever they can, their school desks and their books, and they're making little drums, and they're playing, uh, banging their little swords together to make, you know, uh, little sounds for the kirtan and banging their bangles and dancing around and pretty soon everyone's chanting Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Dama Hare Dama 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 and they're in total ecstasy. They forget anything about being kings and princes, and 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 the sons of ministers and all these. They forget it all. All they taste is this incredible experience, like intoxication of chanting Vishnu's names. When Hiranyakashipu finds out about this, he says to the teachers, Chandanamarka, are you not afraid of me? I've caused the whole universe to bow and tremble at my power. And you too aren't afraid of me? They said, oh great king, we recognize and bow unlimitedly to your power. We cannot control Prahlad. He is infected. In fact, we believe that spies from Vishnu have infected your school and are now spreading love of Vishnu against love of you and causing everyone to disrespect you and distrust you. You have to do something. Prahlad is the source of the, the infection. We cannot have him at school anymore. We're, we, we're so afraid to tell you this, but we cannot have him at school. He's destroying all your plans. Hiranyakashipu is so upset. His own son, how is this possible? So now we have our hero, Hiranyakashipu, facing his own son in confusion. What went wrong? What happened with his grand plan? So Bhagavatam speaks about this story. And um, there's a very interesting thing that Bhagavatam says, that Hiranyakashipu, uh, he, he's very frustrated with Prahlad, and he speaks to Prahlad. Here's what he says. So they, so these, uh, so this conversation is very fascinating. O oh, long lived one, this is Haranyakashipu to Prahlad, my dear Prahlad, my dear son, O oh, long lived one, for how much time have you heard so many things from your teachers? Now please tell me what you think is the best of that knowledge. Prahlad said, hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form, qualities, paraphernalia, and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering respectful worship with 16 times of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming a servant, Hiranyakashipu is thinking, you mean me, Lord, me, right? You're speaking about me. Prahlad says, no, I'm speaking about Lord Vishnu, offering, every, every, uh, uh, offering prayers to him, becoming his servant, considering him to be your, your best and dearest friend, uh, surrendering everything unto him, serving him with body, mind, and words. These are nine processes uh, described and accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life in the service of Krishna, through these methods should be understood to be the most learned person, for he has acquired complete knowledge. After hearing these words of devotional service coming from the mouth of his own son, Prahlad, Hiranyakashipu was extremely angry. His lips trembling, he spoke as follows to Shanda, the son of his guru, Shukracharya. O unqualified, most heinous son of a brahmana. You have disobeyed my order and taken shelter of, 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 of the party of my enemies. You have taught this poor boy about devotional service. What is this nonsense? In due course of time, various types of diseases are manifest in those who are sinful. Similarly, in this world, there are many types of deceptive friends and false garbs, but eventually, because of their false behavior, they actual, their enmity becomes manifest. 
the son of Shukracharya, uh, said, O enemy of King Indra, O king, whatever your son Prahlad has said was not taught to him by me or anyone else. His spontaneous devotional service has naturally developed in him. Therefore, please give up your anger and do not unnecessarily accuse us. It is not good to insult a Brahmin in this way. When Hiranyakashipu received this reply from his teacher, he again addressed his son Prahlad. Hiranyakashipu said, you rascal, most fallen of our family. If you have not received this education from your teachers, where have you gotten it? He was so angry. Just moments ago, he was loving it, loving him and encouraging him. He was so upset. Prahlad Maharaj said, because of their uncontrolled senses, persons too addicted to materialistic life make progress towards hellish conditions and repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed. Their inclinations toward Krishna are never aroused, either by their own instructions or, or the, either by instructions of others, by their own efforts, or a combination of both. So I'm going to jump ahead here. Um, there's an example here given by um, the teachers of Prahlad, and they say that Prahlad this rascal Prahlad has appeared like a thorn tree in the forest of sandalwood. To cut down sandalwood trees, an axe is needed, and the wood of the thorn tree is very suitable for the handle of such an axe. Lord Vishnu is the axe for cutting down the sandalwood forest of the, your family, this family of demons, and this Prahlad is the handle for that axe. So... This is the first of two parts of a two-part series. We'll, on Wednesday, we'll do the second part uh, of this class. Um, so, this this idea of the axe, the axe uh, being Vishnu, the axe head, and Prahlad being the uh, axe handle is very fascinating. And uh, there's a style of music called reggae, and there's a song called. If you are the big tree, we are the small axe. And uh, I like singing this song. Uh, another funny thing is they like, now we know later in the story, as we know, the uh, appearance of Narasinga, he comes in the form of a half man, half lion, as we can see from this beautiful sculpture here. Of Narasinga Dev, deity of Narasinga Dev. So they also see God in the form of a lion, the Lion of Judah, they call him. So uh, uh, in the desire to dovetail all of our propensities in the Lord's service, here's a reggae song quoting from Bhagavatam about the axe. Now, we are born in the forest of materialism. And actually, we can also use our bodies and our lives to become the axe handle for Vishnu to take down the forest of materialism that surrounds us. Why boast of thyself, O heathen man, playing smart but not being clever? You work in iniquity to achieve vanity, but the goodness of Jah will endure forever. Jah is the name that they call God in this tradition. We can sing, the goodness of Jah will endure forever. The goodness of Jah will endure forever. The goodness of Rama will endure forever. The goodness of Krishna will endure forever. If you are big tree, we are the small axe, oh yeah, ready to cut you down, ready to cut you down. Keshavadrita, Narahari Rupa, Jai Jagadi. Jai Jagadish Jai 
Jagadisha, 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 You know, these are the words of my master. Keep on telling me, no weak heart shall prosper. Whosoever diggeth the pit shall fall and be buried in it. Because the goodness of Jah will endure forever. The goodness of Jah will endure goodness of Rama will endure forever. The goodness of Krishna will endure forever. If you are the big tree, we are the small axe. Ready to cut you down. Ready to cut you Keshava Druta, Narahari Rupa, Jai Jagadisha, Jai Jagadisha, Jai Jagadisha, Jai Jagadisha, Jai Jagadisha. Hmm. So what happens next in our story, you'll have to come back on Wednesday and see. Um, the, uh, I'll give you a little, a little hint. Hiranyakashipu turns from hero into anti-hero. That's what happens in our story. This is one of those art films where the hero suddenly starts to shift and become the anti-hero. So next time we'll hear about the standoff between Prahlad, this five-year-old boy filled with faith in Vishnu and his incredibly powerful yogic demon king father, Hiranyakashipu. Any... Uh, any questions? Uh, anyone want to shoot any text message or anything? I can be here for a couple more minutes if you would like. Thank you so much for your kindness, for being here, and for joining us to celebrate Narasingha Dave. Hare Krishna, Gorvani. Can you tell everybody? Thank you. That was amazing. Can you tell everybody what time is part two? Because it's not next Sunday. That's it right. Is. Part two is on Wednesday. Uh, what time? Uh, tell, you tell me what time does it start officially? Um, we are going to do it at eight o'clock, so it coincides with the appearance of uh, Nishinga Dave or Nishinga oh, Dave. You're ruining the story. You're sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, <laughs> spoiler alert. Okay. Yes, yeah, so okay, it sure. will be a little spoiler alert. It's going to be at twilight, which is neither day <laughs> nor night. Think on that one, twilight. All right, so 8 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, where we get to uh, hear the second half of the story. Thank you. Anything else? For yeah, just to add to that, that from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., we'll be doing uh, Abhishek of Lord Nishunga Day uh, from the Temple Room. We'll be Facebook living that and putting it on our uh, the webcam. And then so once the Abhishek is over, then we all hop on to Zoom. You're going to send the link out, correct? Yes, I'll be uh, I'll be given the link uh, for the uh, Zoom call. Um, let me see if I can. Uh... We'll send that out um, Tuesday okay. or Wednesday at the latest, uh, so everybody has it. We'll send it oh, out. Good. That very sounds platform. good. And we're also uh, doing on uh, Wednesday morning at ten o'clock a, a Nishinga Yagya. Um, they uh, that will be on the temple website and our Facebook. Um, uh, there's a question, will it be on the temple website on Wednesday night? Uh, Gauravani will be uh, hosting it from his own Zoom platform on Wednesday night. It won't be on the temple Zoom link that we actually don't have. We just use my husband's Zoom link anyway. 
So um, Gorvani is going to uh, host it on his because you may have uh, room for more people, correct? You're expecting a little bit of a bigger crowd. Yeah, we can organize that for a larger, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, so, so we'll do that. Um, we'll be sending out the link and uh, uh, I'll also put it up on Facebook. Um, any other questions at this point? I hope you're not feeling too bad for our anti-hero, but uh, things are not looking up for, for him, unfortunately. Uh, oh, someone asked me about the sculpture. Um, <laughs> Uh, this sculpture is made was made by a devotee. Uh, I don't think they're purchasable. This was uh, this was made custom made by a devotee, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you the uh, story next time. This it's a, a incredible mystical story about this deity. Uh, I hope you can remember me. Uh, remind me next time, but I'll tell you the story. I have another funny story about a deity of Lord Narasimhadev that I want to tell uh, for the next time. So, uh, any other questions? I'll give you proper darshan of this deity next time. He's really incredible also. Um, so let's go out. Uh, if there's no more questions. Uh, okay. Uh, song, he's asking for the song. Uh, song lyrics. <laughs> okay. It's, the song is called Small Axe. It's a song uh, by an aspiring devotee. Uh, who, who's not, he doesn't know that he's an aspiring devotee. Uh, uh, his name is Bob Marley. But you can find... Uh, uh, He's uh, like everyone else in the world. He's chasing so many things, but he actually is chasing Krishna. Um, Anutama Das, I don't know which Anutama Das is asking, how can we install love of Lord Nisingadev in our kids' hearts? I have never yet met a kid who doesn't like Lord Nisingadev. Is there some, uh, uh, some particular situation why the child doesn't like Lord Nisingadev? Growing up as a kid in ISKCON, we loved Lord Nisingadev. He was our favorites. Um, because he's Prahlad's only five, and he comes to protect Prahlad. But we're giving away the story, so uh, uh, we can discuss we can discuss this more. I think uh, always encouraging your kids to sing the Nishingadev prayers is a good is a good thing. Um, let me see if I can get my kids to come down, and we can end by chanting the Nishingadev prayers. Maybe they'll come and join. Is it okay if we chant our singing day prayers all together? Yes, yes, please. Okay. So let's try this. Maybe I can get my kids to join. Kids, come sing the singing day prayers with me. You want to get a murdunga? <laughs> all right. Oh, Krishna. You can sit right there. I think they can see you up there. Can you see Kirtan up here if he sits? Yeah. Nice. Multi-layered -la Kirtan here. <laughs> come on, guys. Come join for Kirtan. Namaste Narasimhaya Namaste Narasimhaya Oh Namaste Narasimhaya Namaste Narasimhaya Pralada Lada Daime Shilatankanakadaye, 
vitória sem raia para tão See you on Wednesday. Ready, ball. All right.